A couple of things to get started. Um, for those of you who don't know, this is Dee Dee. Dee Dee used to work at our front desk, and now um, she was our team lead at Sahara, and now she is in our billing department, has been for about a year. And she is helping us head up the auto post and the data collection and all of this. So um, she's subbing for Becky Miller, who is out of state right now. So um, Dee Dee's here for that. And of course, we have Ruth. For those of you who don't know, you've been living under a rock or something. Uh, Ruth is our IT extraordinaire, and so she's here as well. So we want to talk about auto posts and explain that a little bit further, what our purpose is, what we're doing, and uh, what our role as technicians and clinicians are in auto post. And then Dee Dee's going to show us some examples of what we're doing in the billing, on the billing side of things. So. First off, I want to tell you a little bit about auto post in general. So auto post is different than just the coding page. So we see the coding page in the exam rooms, and that's what we use when we're coding for patients on EMR, okay? But auto post is a bigger project than that. So what auto post is, is the ability to have that information um, that we're billing for the patient on the computer instead of on a piece of paper. Currently, it's on a piece of paper. We then curry that piece of paper over to the billing department. Sometimes the patients walk out without the paper or without giving us the paper. Um, and so we don't find those charges until later when they're running reports on, on building counters. <laughs> then we were like, oh, Mrs. Jones must have left with her route slip that day. Um, and so there's a delay in the time from when we bill it to, or when we in clinic circle it on the route slip, to when the billers get it. And then if somebody loses a piece of paper in that process, that becomes an issue as well. So the theory is then they get this paper, they have to data entry this into EPM, and then they have to bill it again to the insurance company. So it's a multi-step process. With auto post, if we do the coding page, then these guys can actually get a work list of all the charges and they can choose to accept those charges or modify the charges and they can do that right away. And we don't worry about losing paper and then we can take their time for data entry and things that they would be doing as a result of the paper, and we can focus their time on difficult claims to, to collect from and accounts receivable and things like that. So we're basically just making this a more efficient process from start to finish, okay? So that's why we're harping on the coding page a little bit. And in a little while, Dee Dee's gonna show us what the billers see on their side of things and how that relates to the coding page. So what we have been doing is we've had multiple meetings with billing, Ruth, auditing, um, Susan, and we've had these meetings to talk about where our process is breaking down, where we're having the biggest issues, and there are, th I guess, three main, one has a, a two part, but there are three main errors that we're making that would take our error rating from 20 some odd percent down to below 10% on our coding page. And the first one, like I said, it's two part. It's the wrong doctor or the wrong location. So we're doing the coding page under the wrong doctor or at the wrong location. So that should be part of your, I'm logging in the next gen, is am I at the right location? Am I under the right doctor? And that's significant if you're initiating the coding page and you're making notes on the coding page. So you need to be under the right provider. And if some of you are in tech pool and you're working up only and you're not scribing, that's not as impactful as if you are scribing for multiple doctors. We believe that that's where that's generating. We're gonna keep an eye on that because Ruth said to us the other day that she doesn't know for sure where that's coming from. But um, that being said, we have researched the possibility of NextGen being able to, wherever we check the patient in, under which doctor, being able to link that and lock that over, and we haven't been able to, we, we're not sure that that's gonna come in an update in the future. Is that what I heard? Mm -hmm. But right now, it's not possible, okay? So we have to make sure that we're under the right doctor and we're at the right location. 
okay, when we're logging into, and I mean, if you think about it, practically speaking, is at the beginning of your work day, at the beginning of your shift, am I at the right location, right, and then uh, changing the doctor depending on who you're scribing for, which we should be doing anyway, we all know this, right, those of us who scribe. So that's the biggest error that we're having. The second biggest is that we're not submitting the charges. So maybe the coding page has started, but we're not hitting that submit charges button, okay? And the third biggest issue that we have is that we're missing data. So we're missing visual fields, or we're missing OCTs. So on the route slip, we've circled, because that's how we're, we're comparing this and getting the data. On the route slip, we've circled charge for the OCT, but there's no OCT in the coding page, okay? So you look at it this way. If you're putting it on the route slip, it should be on the coding page, all right? So that being said, if we can correct those errors, which are just little train your brain kind of things, then our coding would, our errors would drop below 10% just like that because those are our top three issues, okay? Um, what we have done is on the coding page, there is a task button. So if you do submit a charge and you go, oh, fudge, that wasn't right. Please don't say anything other than that. That starts with an F. <laughs> okay. So if you do that, you can hit send task, and it's going to go to Megan Katner. It's going to go to Becky Miller. I don't know if Becky Kinter's on that or not. No. Dee Dee. And basically what that's going to do, Megan and Becky are our auditors. Dee Dee's our auto post queen. So the three of these guys are going to get that task and you can say forgot visual field or blah blah so that they'll be able to see that and know what's going on okay um we have discovered in this process Dee, Dee and becky hung out at prospect with desi for quite some time and they discovered that there were certain glitches that we were having so whenever we put in an auto refraction it would charge a refraction if you put absolutely anything on the motility page, it would charge a sensory motor exam. Um, if you put in topography OU, it would charge it twice. So we have found a couple things that are glitchy. According to Ruth, these are corrected in the update. Um, but the overall goal is for us to become more efficient. Um, this process can be improved, and it, it's not going to take a drastic amount of stuff for us to do it. Um, overall, we would like to see the, the route slips not have to travel from location to location. That would be our long-term goal. Um, we, our current route slip is going to go away. We're going to have a one-page route slip, and it's only going to have the CPT codes. So it's only going to have the exam codes, the injection codes, any procedure that we do. The diagnoses are going to go away. Now, the uh, Centera, Fox Run, and Skyline locations will begin to use these route slips first. Um, we will have cheat sheets available in the tech stations with diagnosis codes. But we really want us as technicians to step back and go, are we using NextGen the way we should? So one of the ways we should be using NextGen is maximizing efficiency and utilizing the favorites list. Okay, the favorites list are going to, those are going to be your diagnosis that you need. And then if you have to add a modifier of right eye, left eye, what have you, you can do that too. But those are the codes that you need. That's going to help us because as if you've been to one of these billing lunch and learns before, you know that we talk about not using ICD-9 codes, which we can't eradicate from our system. So if you use the favorites list, you're not going to use an ICD-9 code because you're going to program your favorites to be ICD-10 codes, right? So um, if you don't have a favorites list built, we're encouraging the tech supervisors to reach out to staff and make sure that, you know, we got a couple of lighter weeks coming up um, with the holiday to make sure that you're trying to build your favorites list because it can be a little labor intensive at the beginning. Those of you who have it can attest to that. Um, but once it's done, it makes scribing a lot easier. So um, if you don't have some downtime to do that or you're not using a favorites list, reach out to your supervisor and they'll find you some time to put that together and help you. Um, so that's something we want to start doing, which is why the diagnosis codes are leaving. Now the doctors are all very, very aware that we're switching to auto post. We had a nice lengthy discussion about this at our last doctor's meeting. 
and they're all on board with this and they all understand that it's their job to help us as technicians. So they know that there may be cases where we're like, hey, what do you want me to build for this? Or do, do you want me to build a refraction? Do you want me to build this? Or what code should I build? They understand that we're going to be reaching out to them for help. Um, they understand how this is going to improve our process. And at the end of the day, Dr. Cruz gave them all a hearty exhortation about how it's their responsibility to fill. <laughs> um, so that being said, um, it wasn't as bad as it's been before. It was very, very encouraging, I promise. So anyway, that being said, it was, it was a really good reminder for all the providers that you know they do play a role in the billing and coding of the patient visits. So um, they are aware that this is coming down the pipe as well. So I want to appease a little bit of fears before I turn the, the table over to Dee Dee because she and Becky have said this in every uh, lunch and learn that we've had. Um, eventually, long term, in the grand scheme of things, it would be wonderful to not have a piece of paper follow the patient throughout the entire process. Mm -hmm. That said, we all recognize the value of that piece of paper currently. How do, how do we know the patient's here? How do we know an OCT is done? You know, how, do, how does the doctor know what the diagnosis is if it's not written on the back of the route slip? Some of those crazy things <laughs> that we use, um, we understand that that's a bigger question in our mind as far as how would, we, how would that happen. So for us, nobody's going to get rid of paper 100% until we have a huge focus group and we start talking through this process of what are our systems doing for us, what are we, you know, what about this, what about that. So don't think, oh my gosh, this is like February of next year, the paper's going to go away. That's not going to happen, okay? I want to just kind of reassure you all because that's where everybody sort of went <laughs> the other uh, lunch and learns. And uh, long term, yeah. Obviously, in a perfect world, we want to get rid of it. For right now, we want to utilize our system, get those favorites put in, diagnose through that, make sure our coding's up to par, and then we want to switch and be able to do auto post on the billing side of things. That's our goal. Okay? Dee. All right. So, Miss Becky Miller um, put together some examples of what we've been getting with the route slips versus what we're seeing on the coding page versus what we have to work with when we accept the charges that you guys have put in. Um, so Ruth, if you want to go to um, patient number one route slip. So hopefully all of you can see what has been circled. Uh, we have yeah. this visit yeah. and we have an OCT on that. And then on the next screen is the coding page that you all see. Can anyone tell me what is missing? The OCD. Thank you. So, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, that's my route slip. So, <laughs> that was my route slip. <laughs> um, it's funny how you can tell whose it is by how <laughs> things are circled. No. Um, no. When the doctors <laughs> do the OCT, it's on a different page, so Correct. it doesn't populate in there. Correct. Ever. Never. Correct. So, and I still have to ask yes. every time. Not to ask, you have to put it in. Okay. If they're going to continue to use that OCT page, we will. I will work towards trying to make it link so that it'll bring over a charge. I'm not going to guarantee that. Yeah. No but worries. what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go into this procedures box. Okay. Like right, right click, click add, new. add new, and put in the OCT. Okay. I can do that. Okay, copy that. That that was a lot of the OCTs not coming over. I'm like, man, we're starting off strong with the Sam Rouse right there. And, and no one is checking on anybody. Oh, These are just random. My, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, Joanne. So, Ruth, would you do the same if the, if the refraction doesn't Because sometimes yes. the refraction doesn't okay. come so over. So, anything that. So, Yes. <laughs> She's vacillating. Um, I am vacillating because um, there are some things that you could do, not necessarily for the refraction, but let's say for whatever reason somebody didn't check, a visual field was done and the interpretation was done, but the bill wasn't selected. You could select and then come here and say load procedures and it should load into that visual field. 
if you've got a uh, refraction, that's a little different because you'd have to put something in the AR box for the refraction to come over, which kind of seems senseless. You could just go ahead and here right click and add the refraction charge in. Right click, okay. Yeah, you right click exactly and that allows the, the grid to open and then you can add the refraction charge and you can attach it to a diagnosis. Okay. All right. Um, I'm sorry, but I have a follow up question. Uh huh. So we put in refractions from referring optometrists, but we don't want to charge. So some people tell me to delete it, click on it, and delete the refraction charge on this page. And some say you have to go to the um, glasses, glasses page and unclick the charge button. And I don't know that that necessarily is taking so that charge out. Everybody wants the tracking on the refraction. So put them in. There is an option to see right to here where charge. it says right here where it says charge did they or get, not charge. Did they get that charged or not charged fixed? Because I discussed this with Becky Miller in length for post ops. Post ops. And if, it, and if I you click no charge, it was still charging or still coming through. So she was gonna check into that and get it fixed. So we know she told me on any post ops just to right click and delete it. Mm -hmm. Because Sabre, you want them to put the refraction. We're having some Fort Morgan drama. My apologies. Oh, fun. That's okay. okay. For um, no, I thought we just. What are we doing? Up, so on the refraction. No, I can't me up. It's this issue of a charge comes over, mm -hmm. but the clinics don't want to charge for the refraction. No, we is said it, we weren't going to make them put that in. Right. Because so we're going to be able to charge. But if it is it there. Out. We're going to have them delete it, and then we could always run a report on okay. manifest refractions for that kind of thing later on. The reason so you can delete it. Okay. The reason being is that we want to be able to say, okay, how many refractions are we doing that we're not charging for? So that's why we, it was kind of a do we, we put can, it in there and then just put zero, or do we take it out? So. We decided to take it out. Yes. That's what I was told. That's yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, take it out. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 The no procedure box. So I'll delete the refraction and then I click the no procedures list and count it. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I've been doing. If we're if not charging for it. Correct. What does he yeah. do now? Right he here. He says shows up somewhere. Right here it says no procedures for this encounter. He checks that. Oh, okay. So that way, like your question why I delete it, you know I delete it because we weren't charging for it. Okay. 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 Anybody else on this right here? Okay. All right. If we're unsure whether or not to charge for something, ask the doctor. Ask the doctor. Okay. Okay. Yep. Because at the end of the day, these guys are going to wear the orange jumpsuits. So. Is that necessarily? When it comes okay. down to it, the doctors' names that are submitting these charges, I mean, they have a lot of confidence in us. And so they understand the fact that we're going to have to reach out and we're going to have to ask questions. And that was the dialogue at our last doctor's meeting is you need to be able to help people. I encourage them to, reach, to ask you if you needed any help when you're scribing and I encourage them to be open to the scribe saying, hey, what do you want with this patient? So yes, that's a great question. And that'll come a lot into your guys' clinic, especially when it comes to those OCTs, mm -hmm. when you charge, when you don't charge. So it is kind of fortunate that the charge doesn't automatically show up there for the OCT page, yeah. because for that retina OCT page, because then you'd have the option to say, yes, we are charging, or no, we're not. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm gonna look at trying to automate that a little bit better, but until for then, now, I know you, how to can, do it now. you can put it in. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Easy enough. So we're still on this patient one. So now you're gonna teach us how we're gonna, what you guys see, is that right? Yep. Okay. So she's actually put in um, our pending charge report. So this is basically when you put and submit a coding page, we get a report that shows every single patient, every single charge that she submitted. And this will be what we eventually work off of when the route slips go flying away. <laughs> so, and just so you all know, what they're, what she's saying is this, the submitted charges, it does not mean that it's actually making any changes to the PM account of that patient. It's not physically charging the patient. It's going into a holding tank. So there's a place that sits in the middle, all the charges dump into it, 
they run a report and that's what this report is showing what charges are in that holding tank on that day and then they work this to see if those charges are correct if they figure they're correct then they accept them that's what changes the PM side so don't freak out thinking oh my gosh I've just charged something and this patient's going to get a bill that's not how it works okay. Okay. and that's why the task is going to help you you can just shoot that task and say hey patient it leaks to that patient this is what happened before I hit the I'm going to go back a minute yeah. oh, fine. right here this button task okay that task is tied It'll come up, it'll have Dee Dee okay. and uh, Becky Miller and Megan's name in there, and then you can just do a, a group task to them, and they'll decide who will accept the task. Right, so if you like circled 99213 and it was supposed to be a different code, we won't know unless you task us and tell us we've submitted the wrong code. Same thing and comes up, oh, sorry. It's okay. Same thing comes up when you guys have already submitted. And the doctor's like, oh, by the way, I want an OCT on that patient. I want a visual field. You can't do anything because the template is locked. So you're going to go and you're going to send her a task, them a task off of the coding page and say, doctor added OCT. Doctor added visual field to this encounter. Okay? So that corrects that kind of issue. Okay. So on the next one. Oops, sorry. There we go. This is... What we see currently with the stack of route slips that we get, we pull up based on the encounter number and it pulls this screen in to the billing side on EPM. So you can see, I was just going to point out, there's diagnoses here, okay, and then we have the 99213 over here for this patient. There's no OCT code anywhere, obviously, because it wasn't on the page. Right. So there's no way at all that these guys would know there's an OCT involved if the route slip weren't there. So that's like letting a patient go into optical and take a pair of sunglasses, pocket them, and leave. Because there's no way that we would be able to charge anybody anything based on this. So we have to be clear on getting those charges on the page. Yes, sir. And, and we will have a way of doing OC, building OCTs, uh, fundus photos, visual fields, fluorescein. You'll educate my clinic so they can educate we, We've them. already done that. Okay, you, perfect. At the very perfect. beginning perfect. of this. And Thank we'll you. show you again in just I, a couple I, I, minutes. I, I, if, if you can teach my clinic, they'll teach me. Okay. <laughs> so we're just so just we saying. have three different examples, so you'll yeah, see it's it. It's the same process for FAs and fundus photos as mm -hmm. it is for an OCT. Injections. Okay. Inj everything. everything. Okay. Yeah. Okay. When I sat with Desi to learn how you guys submit your coding pages, um, she basically says if they don't see it on that coding page, they add it. And if we get duplicates, we know not to bill. Two FAs. Two of them. Yeah. You know. So, yeah, it's Saber usually starts out, we don't expect you to be coders. That's what we do over on the billing side. So if we have multiples, we will make it right before it goes to the insurance company for the patient. Or goes to the patient. But that being said, it's really important so. that you guys do put the charges in so that if there's something that's causing a duplicate that's running in the background, mm -hmm. we can catch that. They'll look at it and then they'll contact me and say, hey, what can we do to fix this, or this is an error coming up. So it's very important that we can kind of keep grooming the system so that we know what's happening and what's not happening. So that's why it's important. Okay. So we, I think that essence of what we're saying is we'd rather have two OCTs than none at all. Then Correct. Right. Okay, next, next one. Okay, so this one has an office visit and OCT. And then if we go to the coding page, of course, unless there's something on the back, there was no reason to do an OCT. And as you can see, the OCT oh. is on the coding page. We didn't One of censor our. like who's round <laughs> with <laughs> Right? I know. <laughs> We're not making you see there. You've got your, your glaucoma, so you have a reason to do an OCT. You've got macular, or excuse me. An age related nuclear cataract. You have your OCT test here linked to the glaucoma diagnoses. Okay. And please make sure if there's more than one glaucoma diagnosis, 
that you put them all on that OCT. We get a lot of them come over with one of the diagnosis codes and it needs to go out to the insurance. So if you could link the, the POAGs to I did that. the OCTs when you do them. So what's wrong with that one? Nothing. Uh, Nothing. This is a good one. I can't figure out what's wrong with this that one. This is a good one. This one was submitted okay. correctly. Yeah. <laughs> now they want to take yeah. credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said that I have to do it. All right, let's look at the coding side of things, okay? So you've got your diagnoses, you've got your office code, and there's an, this particular one is the OCT. So you can see where that fills over in this side so those guys would know I need to fill an OCT. Okay. Okay. Next one. Yep. Okay, so sorry, Becky normally does this, so I got it. I got this. Got it? Okay. Okay. <laughs> This is built. Um, we've got a motility page on this one. Okay, so we have hypertropia, we have motility and a refraction. And if you flip to the next slide, this was what was put into the motility page. Okay, this is not a sensory motor exam. Ortho in all four quadrants does not qualify as sensory motor. Sensory motor is at least two measurements in two fields of gaze. So, as a general rule, Dr. Arnold does this. Occasionally, if you scribe for Dr. Smith, that man will whip out a prison bar so fast. Um, he's doing a sensory motor, as a general rule. Uh, but there has to be a reason behind it. Okay, hyperopia, or a lack of, of chief complaint that supports diplopia. So hyperopia <coughs> in this scenario would not support a sensory motor exam. So either we have to see something in the motility, or excuse me, our alignment, <coughs> Our motility, or the patient has to have a double vision complaint in order to justify a sensory motor type exam. Okay, and then this ortho in all four positions of gaze does not constitute a sensory motor exam, so we wouldn't be able to build this. But we found that there was a link. Anytime you put anything on this page, it would build that. And so Ruth says in the update mm -hmm. that goes away. And these guys, Dr. Arnold and the others who are living on this page, have the option of choosing bill sensory motor like you do on the OCT interpretation page, et cetera. If you, if you get a chance to get into the test database, you'll see right up here, there'll be a checkbox that says bill motility, or bill mo sensory motor. I think I changed it to sensory motor. So it'll say bill sensory motor. So it won't, it won't matter what fields you fill in, that one. you have to <laughs> purposely fill in. Okay. Okay, so then the next slide should be what we see. And as you can see, it did build a sensor motor. And that's an auto thing that we know yeah. is happening now. Okay. And so these guys aren't going into the exam pages really and looking at the exam pages. Unless so we question something. <laughs> if they question something, they will. Obviously in this patient, I hope they did because they would go hyperopia doesn't justify a sensory motor exam. However, um, if, if we had somebody new who didn't know to do that, it could potentially cause us to have an unbill or an audit for an exam if those numbers go up. Fortunately, that is not a test that we do too often without a code associated with it. So before we get on to just an open forum, we really want you guys to let us know if you're seeing weird stuff on this page. Let your supervisor know, shoot Ruth an email, whatever, so that we can continue to meet about this and try to work out the kinks because we are going this direction. Like I said, um, I think the route slips just came in this week and Sentara, Fox Run, and Skyline are gonna start using the new route slips without the diagnosis codes on it. Um, they ordered the first round and they'll work out some of the bugs. Um, they had their lunch and learns uh, Sentara and um, Fox Run sooner than this one. And so they're gonna work out the bugs. We've seen their numbers go down as far as their error rates. So we're hoping as we're taking this show on the road, um, we'll see everyone else's go down as well. Um, so the next phase would be to in introduce those route slips here. There's, like I said, it's just gonna be one route slip. Um, it's gonna have the CPT codes for everything. It's not gonna be, if you've worked at the other locations, you know we have a, a medical route slip and an optical type one that